Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make these cute little notebook or sketchbooks. And these are perfect for using just a one piece of watercolor or mixed media paper. You can make a journal using one piece of watercolor paper and it will give you eight pages or 16 double sided. If you use two pieces of watercolor paper, you will get 16 pages or 32 front and back, which is actually a perfect for doing a monthly art challenge. And this is what I plan on using this book for. So if you want to make these cute little mini journals, sketchbooks, or mixed media junk journals, anything, these are perfect for using up scraps. So let's make a mini sketchbook journal together. Let's go over some of the items you're going to need to complete this project. I will leave links to some of the items in the description below if you are interested in purchasing them. So first you're going to need a ruler and a pencil to make your measurements. You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut your paper or a paper trimmer. You're going to need a junk brush to brush on your glue, so something that you don't mind getting glue on. You can go to the dollar store and get some cheap brushes. And then next you're going to need glue. I do recommend using this glue because it's specifically for book binding and paper projects. It is an archival adhesive, therefore it will not yellow over time, and it does dry clear yet remains flexible, which is perfect for when you're doing a sketchbook journal that you're going to be opening and closing a lot. So I will leave this linked in the description below if you are interested in purchasing some PVA glue. Now this bottle is very large and will last me a very long time because we're going to use only just a tiny amount. Next you're going to need some paper and I'm specifically doing a mixed media watercolor art journal so I'm going to use some of my Canson XL watercolor paper pad that I have a few of these laying around and lastly you're going to need some kind of cover for your journal. This is a piece of chipboard, so it's stiff but flexible. And if you don't have a piece of chipboard laying around, you can also use something like a cereal box. It's thick enough to provide a nice cover. And if you don't like this, the printed side, you can always paint over it. So the first thing we're going to do is measure out our paper for the inside of our journal or sketchbook. Now this project is great for using even just a single sheet of paper. That makes the journal about this size and it contains eight pages and if you use both sides that comes out to 16 pages for this mini journal if you do one sheet. Now for my book I'm going to be using two pages but it's the same process as for one. I'm doing two pages because that will give me about 32 pages to use so I want to make sure I have enough pages for each day of the month. If you are looking at other monthly art challenges this is a perfect little project to do to contain all your work into one little mini journal. So these measurements are super simple and I already have them marked on my paper. You're basically going to cut the paper in half each way. My paper is 12 inches across so we're going to cut it at the six inch mark and it is nine inches long so we're going to cut it at the four and a half mark. Now you can use your scissors or paper trimmer to cut your paper. So if you are doing just one page for this sketchbook you should have four even rectangles. And what you're going to do is just fold each one in half. So this is six inches and you're going to fold it in half so that it becomes three inches by four and a half. One, two, three, four pages out of one little rectangle, or if you wanted to do a double spread, you could do that as well. So now you're going to fold each page in half.
Now, these are all the signatures for your book. So you have four signatures, so you can just line them up. And this is the start of your little mini sketchbook journal. If you are going to do two pages for your journal, then this is how big it will look with all your signatures together. And you should have eight. So now we're going to glue them all together. You want to tap them down on the spine because the pages may be a little uneven, but we want the spine to be even, so we want to tap that on the table and make sure it is flat. And then you can either take binder clips to clip them together on each end. So you can binder clip your signature together or smush them between two heavy books in order to glue these together. And we're going to start gluing the spine of our sketchbook. And I just put a line of glue. You don't want to put too much, but you do want to, you want to do several thin layers of this glue. And you want to make sure it touches each one, but does not go over the side. So once you have your first thin layer, you're going to let this dry for a few minutes and then apply another layer. So while this is drying, I just want to take a minute to explain why I chose to do this binding method, which is called perfect book binding, where you use the glue on the spine. And that is because when you open up some of your spreads, they're going to be a seamless piece of paper that you can paint across the entire spread. Whereas if you chose something such as Copic stitching, saddle stitching, or kettle stitching, it generally has pieces of thread that go down the middle which bind all the papers together. That is something I just specifically didn't want in my little mini journal. However, that's something that you can totally do. And I may do a tutorial on one of those in the future. So here we are laying down layer two of the glue on the spine. I typically do three thin layers of glue. So here is all our pages glued together and dry. So now I'm going to take the clips off. And just open up the pages to make sure that they can open without breaking off. If they do break off, then you'll want to clip them back together and do another layer of glue. So this looks like it's all ready to put a cover on. So this is the thin piece of chipboard or piece of cardboard backing for something that I will be using for my cover because it's quite flexible. Even cardstock would probably work for a cover. So here I am just lining up my little block of paper right to the edge and I'm just going to do a pencil line. Then I'm going to put the spine area flat against that line and do another line. And then I'm going to lay it down for the back side. And then that's our outline for our book cover. This chipboard is thin enough that I can just cut it with scissors. So now we want to fold along those lines of what's going to be the spine of the book. If you have a bone folder, that would be helpful. Um, I can't find mine at the moment, so I'm just gonna use my ruler as an edge and bend it over so that looks pretty good 
Now we're gonna take our block of pages and our glue and I'm just going to put a line of glue down the spine. You don't want to too much because you don't want it to squish out along the edges and get stuck to your paper. So I'm just gonna spread it real thin and hopefully have it um, prevent less squishing. I don't know if that's the right word. I'm gonna have this paper towel nearby to wipe off anything that does get squished out. So we're just going to place our block right in the center. And I'm pushing down very hard. No glue is coming out of this side, which is good. There is some coming out over here, so I'm just going to take my brush and kind of slide it along to wipe out any of that excess glue. So once I do that, and no more glue is coming out. So now you can clip it and let it dry for a little bit. So now your mini journal sketchbook is all put together and we're just going to open up the pages. Oh, I love that it lays flat and we're just going to bend the pages a little, get them stretched out so that way the spine gets used to being bent. So I just go through each page and kind of stretch it out a little and make sure everything is working properly and that it doesn't come unglued. So now your journal sketchbook is all complete and this is the time that you can take if you have imperfect edges you want to shave down or if you want to round all the corners of your pages. If you used two pages, this will be a 16 page mini journal sketchbook or 32 if you count the front and back of each side. Here is a one page mini journal sketchbook so it's slightly thinner and this will have eight pages or 16 pages double sided. So that is it for the mini sketchbook journal tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and go make one of your own. And if you do, please tag me over on Instagram so I can see anything that you make. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.